Welcome to the Capoeira Experience Podcast, where you are going to learn how Capoeiristas got where they are, how they keep their motivation, why they do what they do, and even how they do business through Capoeira. I hope you enjoy it and learn something from their experience. What's up, Capoeira Nation? Welcome back to the Capoeira Experience Podcast. Today, we are, con uh, are going to continue with the female series. On this opportunity, I have the pleasure to interview a female capoeirista that started capoeira back in 2004. After seeing capoeira, this beautiful art, she, of course, she had to fall in love with this. And uh, since she fell in love with this beautiful art, and since then, uh, she never stopped. And let me introduce you to Graduada Paqueta from Capoeira Chef Brazil, Calgary. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Awesome. I, it's like, like we talk on Instagram, it's, it's kind of funny the Kashishi interview in Paqueta. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you almost uh, you can go a long time without ever knowing anyone's real name. So. Yeah, we, we need someone called Biriba so we can all Biriba so we can have them yeah. in <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have a full group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so before we jump into the like the entire interview, what are your social medias? Like Instagram, Facebook, website, if you have some, so people can find you and follow you. Yeah, best spot is always going to be Instagram. Um, my Instagram handle is designed by ST Light. Um, I'm also a watercolor artist in addition to Capoeira, so the account is a lot of paintings, but there's Capoeira in there too. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you have any yeah. Facebook? Uh, no. Well, just for the artwork. So nothing for nothing. For okay. Capoeira. All right. Perfect. Perfect. And people can can people buy you art? Yes, they can. So there's a link on my Insta account, but it's all through uh, Etsy. Oh, cool, cool. Okay. Hopefully, yeah. they, I have some capoeirista. We have some capoeirista buying you. You are there, so to support the yeah. the arti artistic part. Of yeah. Yours. For sure. There's a bunch of Brazil paintings on there and some capoeira as well. So. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, I remember you you saying that that you did some capoeira painting on last year. Yeah, yeah, I did a full calendar and then actually I've done one T-shirt design for a group out in Victoria and potentially doing another one for a group in Toronto for their batizado next year. So. That that's so cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, you never know where your uh, where your art will take you. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. For sure, that, that's why I love technology, because technology can connect you with so many people. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. That's I mean, awesome. Across the world. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, for sure. And uh, now, so now co coming into the interview, uh, tell us a little bit about your Capoeira story from the beginning to now, and you can start however you want. Sure, um, yeah, so 2004, um, I had a girlfriend, she started talking about it. I had never heard the word before and just thought, okay, sure, I'll give it a try. So I went to a class and even that, it was my first time seeing it. So it's pretty foreign, but you've never seen it before. You're like, what are they doing? Are they dancing? Like, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, but I gave it a try. And honestly, at that point, I had very little athletic background. Like our very first class, I remember we did like push-ups and like my arms were just shaking I like, didn't even have the strength to hold myself up um but yeah so the first three years that I trained were kind of intermittent I was pretty shy and then I took a two-year pause while I was going back and doing my post-secondary education nice. and then it came back in 2009 so it's actually been steady since 2009 kind of like three times a week and growing with my group and man at this point like we've been to Brazil, I've been to Hong Kong, I've been to several Wow, places. that's awesome. Yeah, Ireland, Amsterdam. And um, it's just become such a like big part of our life. Like my husband and I, whenever we travel, our travel plans now always seem to revolve around like, is there a city that we can like visit that will have Capoeira so we can go to there? So. That's awesome, that's awesome. It's awesome <laughs> how like Capoeira can take you so many places. Oh yeah. And just form relationships. Oh man, like I've met oh, people. Yeah. I met people like 10 years ago in Indonesia and now like I keep up with them on social media. And, like, oh, wow. That's awesome. So yeah. the, the, uh, the friendship continues. Like, with oh, the totally and it's amazing to see too, like you, you spend so many years just as like this small student and now there's people that I know that are getting their like contramaster belts and you're just like, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's like, true. Yeah. Thinking you'll, you'll always just be this beginner in the art, but to see yourself grow with other people, it's fascinating. 
Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, because same, same with me. I've seen kids, and now they're all grown up, and I'm like, man, like, I don't know, I don't know if they're getting older or I'm getting older. <laughs> so I don't know. I think I'm gonna say they're getting older. Going past years, and you're like, exactly, exactly. So you made your point uh, that you met your husband in Capoeira, right? I did. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember uh, I interviewed him. I believe it's episode 16. Okay. And I, I, I hope people can, can go back there and can, can get to meet him. Yeah. And uh, uh, how was the, the connection there in the Capoeira and the Capoeira community and all stuff? Yeah, there's um, so in Calgary, there's been a bit of like transition with schools over the years. Um, my group, Ashe Brazil, I believe we were the first one in the city in Calgary. But there were some instructors that kind of came through the group and then they moved on and started their own groups. And so for a brief period, I followed my first instructor to his second group. And that was actually how I met Mr. Zigazi when he was a beginner. <laughs> so, yeah, so we trained together for a couple of years. And then, um, like I said, I took some time off to do my post-secondary. And okay. then when I finished school there, I came back to training. Um, and incidentally, Jiganshi and I were just kind of starting to date, so I was like, just in case either dating or tap letter doesn't work out. Oh, uh, that's pretty cool. Keep these separate, but um, it's actually worked so well just because of that. It just gives us, I feel like, twice the access to like bigger community. Um, yeah. We get to go to each other's events, and obviously in any event, your mestre is going to bring in, you know, instructors from around the world. So I feel like it really broadens your your horizon with meeting other people, and so I've loved that aspect of it. That's and awesome. Yeah, just as a married couple, like, it's just fun. I'm sure anyone who's, like, in a couple of relationships can relate, where, like... Oh, we'll yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. And he's giving me tips on my footwork, and I'm like, oh, I don't do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, then, now you, you mentioned another point, that you and your husband are all different groups. So, usually, there is the thing of like oh you you my wife you have to follow my group or you my husband you have to follow my group how i'm pretty sure uh, out there are going to be at, at least like that this kind of sample or or like they they start different dating different groups and all stuff and be like hey yeah. you know like your different group and different group how how do you guys can can balance that out for people I, that are on, on that point i think it's good for us in so many aspects, like even beyond Capoeira, just the fact that we train on different nights of the week, um, I'd say like we're both pretty independent people, so it's nice for both of us to have time to ourselves during the week. Um, but on the Capoeira front, it's so neat. Like he, he became instructor in his group a couple years ago, and it's fun for me to see that but not have any pressure related to it. And similarly, you know, like I'm at a point in my, my group in my Calgary school where I'm one of the more senior students, and... Um, He's really supportive of me, but it's it's good because I feel like my Capoeira journey is my own. I'm still training for me. I'm not doing it because I'm following my my husband and I, I want to get to his level or prove that I'm at his level. It's just purely this thing that fortunately we both love. And so we understand the, the time commitments and the travel and the yeah. the time away from home. But um it's I've always been very happy that my Capoeira journey is very much my own. That's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, and you, you can also get home and be like, oh, you know, like today I did this move and, and the hold and stuff like that. And you can oh, yeah. like share that <laughs> experience. Definitely feed off each other. And like, it's funny, like Canadians will use the example, like everyone here watches hockey. And um, okay. if he goes away somewhere to do Capoeira without me or like similarly, like I've gone to events without him. And I'll come home and like, we'll seriously be up talking until like three o'clock in the morning and like that's like, awesome videos and like, analyzing takedowns and oh did you see yeah. that guy put there <laughs> yeah yeah and you'll be like oh you gotta see this video like and you show that's awesome that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah it's pretty fun <laughs> yeah so you you can share the experience there like get feedback w with each other and yeah. support each other too because yeah. he goes to your events and you go to see his events and that, i think that's pretty cool yeah no it's pretty awesome so. yeah and uh now that you you we talk about a little bit of the relationship. Why, why, uh, and you now to, to your Capoeira journey, right? So you started in 2004, when did you get your nickname? And why Baqueta? 
Um, I got it, I think, within the first year. Oh, cool. I, it's funny. I wasn't sure what I would end up getting because at first, like, I was really quiet. And then when I started talking, I kind of had, like, a bit of a sass. And I was like, how about I get something that's, like, related to my attitude? Um, but, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Pumpernus de Sapel, he was actually my first teacher. He was instructor back then. And um, yeah, he was the one that gave me my name. He just, I think he watched me for a few classes and he thought, like, okay, I think I've got something. I'm like, what? Nice. And he said, it's Baqueta. And I'm like, what's that? Because I didn't know. And he's like, I think you'll like it. And so he goes and he grabs the Baqueta and like, just like holds it up. Like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. like, yeah, okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty tall and I'm slim and. I'm a lot more muscular now, but I'm pretty sure when I started, I was just like sticks, like going everywhere. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what was going on in your head when you when, when you saw the baqueta thing. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> hey, that's funny. Because it's <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Then and you say you got it like like a year right after you you started, right? Yeah, it was just in the first year. So um, I actually was so like. So shy when I started Capoeira, it took me like three years to get my first belt because I was too shy to go to Batizado. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had to go to Vancouver to get our belts back then, and I was just like, no. <laughs> yeah, well, the funny thing is, like, uh, I relate to that because it took me one year to play in the Hoda. Yeah. I, uh, you know, like technical Hoda, like without instruments, without people singing, just like five Hodas. I used yeah. to play on those, but on the main hall that I used so so nervous. I was just like freeze. Then oh, I was like, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not playing. Yeah. No yeah. <laughs> and then the first time I played, I, it just was like, jinga jinga, still like, like like really quick. Maro, you French, okay? Then I shake the hand and then get out. And <laughs> before, but outside, I was just playing normal. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. No, I completely uh, uh, relate with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now the the point of of the 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 all these interview besides yours like knowing your background capoeira uh, sharing your experience, also I wanted to to start the the female series, yeah for for the capoeira female series, yeah and um uh, because you know like I, I said in the episode before this one, uh, I met Maestra Francesinha um, my last trip to Brazil. Yeah. And she was talking about all the, the how is th there were a lot of interaction, female interaction in the capoeira, but it's not like really known, you know, like it, you don't hear a lot of stories of like, oh, you know, like Dandara the, or, or those kind of stuff. And she was saying that the yeah, first time I heard this, the female capoeiristas on that time, on 1800s, they used to tie their, their dress and jump into the hall and start doing capoeira. And I was like, oh, then that's pretty cool. Now I want to hear those kind of stories, you know? Yeah. Then I was like, I'm, I'm going to start doing that, that female series. Yeah. And I want to get female uh, uh, perspective now, you know? Then um, now you as a female capoeirista, and now you've been doing it for, is that 12 years now? 12? Uh, yeah, I'd say, like, I'm, I'm pretty bad. Regular, like, since 2009 <laughs> was like the like the the biggest like steady sprint, I'd say. So. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Nice. And then, uh, how? What do you think? What are your thoughts about the capoeira community today's day? About the female capoeira community? Yeah, it's um, it's growing, which I like. It's um, there's been a lot of transition, I'd say. When I first started. And granted, I was, I was young. I was, like, 21 years old, and I think my first, like, new capoeira, like, the women that were there were, like, tattooed and dreadlocks and had big piercings, and I was, like, kind of scared of them. <laughs> um, you know, not that they weren't friendly. It's just it was an intimidating kind of, like, experience to go into. Um, and then we kind of gone through waves where, like, we had a few years where I felt like I was one of the only regular girls and, like, in Cal like in my group in Calgary, we have always yeah. had some good ones in Vancouver. Um, but like I've I've always looked up to women. Like it's it's so great to see other strong female peppers display. Um, especially when like Instagram really started to gain traction. Like that's when you really start getting exposed to other groups around the world. And that's when I started kind of collecting my own like female heroes from like 
different groups and man, I could name a bunch. Like there's <laughs> like I watch their stuff and like bookmark it and you go down and you try and practice their moves and and then I think just as a female growing up in the sport, like especially when I started teaching, I teach our intro and basic classes and I've done that for a few years. It just occurred to me that like when there's a new female coming in, like you have the opportunity to be that first face that they see and that first encounter. And maybe the guys just like aren't as aware of it, but like, hey, it's intimidating to walk into like a room full of men that are throwing down and you're like yeah. the only girl or one of the only girls. And to see another female there and just like see how she handles it. And yeah, like I enjoy now just being kind of like a reassuring, like you are safe here. You have a place here. There is a spot in Kepler of everybody. That's awesome. Yeah. The, but you, you felt that support from the, the female community too. Yeah, I think I think it's once you open up to it. And honestly, like with women, I think there's a lot of shyness at first and that can come off as being aloof or as having attitude. And it just takes that openness to be like, I really admire your style. I really admire this. Yeah, that's awesome. I would love to learn this from you. And uh, that just opens so many doors. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. So I find that great. Um, but yeah, we've got a really good female you know, contingent in Calgary right now, uh, which I absolutely love. And just people have different strengths. Like some, like some of the girls just love music, and like their oh yeah, for sure. And stuff is just like it pushes the entire group forward because this like newer student just goes and learns all this this stuff, like all these new songs, and it just yeah lights a fire in you to be like, okay, that's amazing. Oh so, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, like I always say that the even female and uh, male, we have to help each other to like, especially play in the hall that, you know, like, hey, you know, like, help that friend, like, do you play in the hall that? How many times do you play? Hey, let's go play, you know, like, push each other so we can play that more, because that's, that's the only way where we can get more experience in Capoeira, yeah. it's just by playing in the hall that. If you don't play in the hall that, you can train 20 times per week, but you have to use that in the hall that, so that can yeah. stick in your brain, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. Well, I think the other thing, too, is that, like, don't get me wrong, like, seeing anyone do Capoeira is impressive, and, like, most of the guys, like, they're capable of these crazy stunts. So, like, when you see a woman, like, do something, like, insane in a holiday, you're just like, oh, my God, and it opens yeah. your eyes, like, I can do that. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you can be surprised of how much nice stuff or, like, really cool stuff that you can, you can do, too, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's that's on because I think it's, it's really cool when when I see that too when I see that woman taking out taking down a, a, another a guys you know like damn that's really cool <laughs> because it's, it's it's the same reaction you know yeah yeah no hundred percent yeah had, um, in our school um, our first like recognized like title belt I guess that they call it is formado which is uh. It's one belt away from me, but um, in Vancouver this year, like one of our first female students in I don't know how long, probably like 10 years, got that belt. And it was just so empowering to be like, okay, like, doors are open, we're going for this now. So. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. And now, how, what is in your, in your perspective, how do you see the, the Capoeira female in the future, here to 5, 10, 20 years? Uh, I think it can only continue to grow. Nice. Um, yeah, I I really like where it's headed, and it's cool to have been around Kepler long enough now that like you're meeting a lot of couples that have gotten married and they've had kids, and like children are being brought up in the academy and things like that. Because um, whether it's children or not, like there is a difference in like having a family in Kepler. Like if you have kids, like you do have to take that time off and that time away. But it's neat to see kind of groups growing and respecting that like I've visited places where they kind of have like a studio off the side which is sort of the kids play area and they yeah. kids are driving up while mom is downstairs training and I just think that's so awesome so yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah I hope it just continues to grow I want to see more you know female mestras out there and <laughs> oh yeah for sure for sure is there there's a lot of mestras coming out you know like yeah. he's he's paying off yes absolutely yeah, no, that's awesome. I guess I, I also want to see a girl, you know, I, I, want, I want the community in general. Uh, I want the capoeira, doesn't matter style, doesn't matter group. I want to see a capoeira girl because I'm 100% sure capoeira can help people, you know, like to feel better, to think better. And I always say capoeira 
was made to bring people together. And I think that's awesome. No, 100%. Um, we talk about that a lot in our school, that, like, if you're going to the gym or if you're doing yoga or something like that, like, if you miss a class or you miss three months of classes, like, no one's necessarily going to notice. But that's yeah. the aspect of Capoeira, that, like, the community is there, the family is there. Like, we've been to each other's weddings. We've been to, like, God, like, parents' funerals. But we've, like, seen kids born. We've seen them brought up. Yeah. But, yeah, like, it's just, it's such a family aspect. And I think that is balanced out by, like, male and female figures like in some ways you become kind of like the mother figure to like even like the 20 year olds or the teenagers coming up in Capoeira like they've got someone to talk to and yeah so. <laughs> yeah yeah you you see you see that the whole process of people growing and people they leave and they come back hey I haven't seen you for like a moment what happened yeah totally yeah and it, it provides accountability both ways like they want to be there to see you and you got to like, you don't want to take too much time off because like, you know, you feel, you feel kind of a responsibility to your students that you just want to make sure that they're doing okay or, you know, oh. they're... <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, what do you think uh, we, uh, we as a community, as a Capoeira community, we can help the Capoeira female community to, to grow and to get stronger? Yeah, just like ways that we can do it. Um, I think it's going well in a lot of ways. There's something that I, like, I recognize the positivity in them that they could change. Like I'll, we've been to events where they'll make an all an all women plaza, and I like that in some aspects. I think it's good because it it'll encourage the newer women to like feel safe in there, but. Nice. You want to go play in the huddle with the men as well. <laughs> so yeah, it's, there's a part, like there's a line there, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. But I really enjoy, and I think it's really important, um, just to see, like, when events are put on and people are brought, like, I love it when there's a female instructor or a professor, or, like, just a female guest brought to bring people for cups. Um, the perspective is different. Their understanding of how your body works is different. Things like that. We um, we went to an all-women's event in Seattle a couple years ago, myself and two other girls from my group. Nice. And it was just funny to, like, not funny, but like it was fascinating to hear the dialogue of how they've come up in the community. And some of them have been training for like 20 years. And, you know, it's not talked about so much now, but like sometimes you had to use, you're like, oh, I'm cute. Can I play in the huddle? Like you had to use that to get in there. <laughs> and I think that's disappearing now. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 No, that's pretty cool though. That's pretty cool. At least like, like is that interaction, you know? Yeah. With, with the community. No, that's, that's pretty cool. Are, are you planning on going to any other events, like, um, soon? Not this year. I uh, We had a really awesome year for travel. So we went to Ireland earlier this year for a bachelado, and then I was in Amsterdam over the summer. For oh, some cool. Time, but I actually got to visit a Capoeira school there, um, which was really great. And, uh, yeah, so that's coming up from here now. My husband's off to L.A. actually for the Capoeira Brazil event in a couple weeks. Oh, nice, nice. So, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That'll be in the past by the time this airs, probably. Um, but yeah, um, nothing firm right now where there's potential for us to go to Brazil in 2020. Um, but yeah, right now we're kind of, we're actually just kind of coming out of Batizado season. The summer has been Batizados and events and demos and workshops. and Yeah, yeah, then comes the, the, the winter and it comes the, yeah. until next year. Yeah, so we're slow right now. I have, I have zero doubt there will be another one in the future. Like, I'm sure wherever we travel next year, there will be Capoeira involved, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I Because I, n- now, uh, as a, me, me and my wife, we make plans around Capoeira trips. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And she trains uh, too, right? Your wife? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's been uh, training with me for four years now. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. The, the episode is out. You, you can listen to it. It's a uh, okay. last episode, yeah. Was it your wife? Yeah, your yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Canarina is, Canarina. is her name. Yeah, yeah. She's probably listening around. Oh. <laughs> That's, <you> got you. <laughs> That's awesome. We also, we, we really want to go there because in Canada, because we, we want to visit you guys. We want to visit uh, uh, Instructor Sua. Yeah, we want to visit um, uh, uh, Sokechi, in, but he's in Toronto. He's in Toronto. He's a bit of a ways away. I, uh, he's, yeah, he's a cool. I've met him once. 
<laughs> yeah. And uh, he's a big dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I met him in Chicago last time. He's he's awesome. He's he's too super super nice, not nice friend, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm hoping we'll get out to Toronto soon. We still have we've got some ties out there with one of the groups. So I imagine we we might end up there next year for one of their events. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think they do it around April. Oh, that's 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 nice. I think I think so. Yeah, because I I met him in Chicago in April. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now uh, when you guys just had a bachisado, right? Yeah. Not so, ago. Yeah, my group had the Calgary group had a bachisado over August long weekend, and then um, our the head of our groups in Vancouver, so we were out there over Labor Day. Um. So yeah, okay. we just back like two weeks, two weeks ago. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. They actually brought in a Professora Rochignon from uh, New York. And oh, cool. Yeah, she was super fascinating. She, um, I think she's got, like, she's Angolero now, but she was contemporanea probably not that long ago. Um, her classes were so much fun. And just the way she taught with, like, the Angolero mentality, like, there's so many things that just, I've never thought that way. And, yeah, it's just, it's so cool. It's like, oh, yeah. Their culture almost. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, for sure, yeah. I think, uh, ooh, what is her name again? Roshino, I think. Anna is her real name. Blonde. I, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I know her. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, but uh, I just, I'm bad at names, but I'm good at faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was excited when I saw her name on the on the roster. Our master is getting better at, uh, like, just making sure that there's a woman there. He tries yeah. to be here. Oh, yeah, it, for sure. Oh, for yeah. sure, yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah, because you, you want to feel that support, too. Yeah, well, support and it's inspiration. and Exactly, um, yeah. Yeah, he brought to Get the Brava, like, a couple years ago. Okay, nice. And, yeah, I was, like, just, like, starry-eyed the whole weekend over here. Ah, like, that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that was the year I got my graduate belt, and, like, yeah, she, like, took me down for my game, and I was just like, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, it's been. When are you... You go to California, there's a lot of female caporistas too. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Capora Sergio Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I visited them just for like a holiday a couple years ago. Um, but there's a lot of females in that group that I. Oh, know, yeah. Like, uh, the, the entire California is. The yeah. Capora in California is getting huge, huge, huge. Yeah, no, I believe it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bunch of, bunch of people, a bunch of groups too. But he's awesome, he's awesome. I just love the growth of, of the Capoeira community. Yeah, no, it's it's fascinating. Well, and even in Calgary, and, like, we kind of befriended the group in Edmonton, so they're three hours north of us. So, yeah, we've kind of got, like, three three little clusters going on that we we get to see a lot of each other. And it's neat. It's, the community is definitely thriving here. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, so they, they, you guys, you, you guys' class is growing, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, yeah, it, it takes a little time, but once start taking off, like, like a lot of people start seeing. Yeah, no, we've like we've done a lot of festivals outside this year, and social yeah. media always helps everything. And, oh, uh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, but no, I think it's just it's a good it's a good community. It's a good vibe right now, and um, for new females or males, like whoever's coming in, I feel like our group has become really good at just like bringing them in and just into the fold was like just kind of being encouraging and I I don't know like when I keep my classes because I do the basics class so I've got a lot of access to like the beginner beginner students and it's oh. just to give them that reassurance of like <laughs> we were all terrible at this one so like every one of us did a first jenga and first yeah time, the first time in the hotel where you're frozen and you're like yeah 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 good. exactly <laughs> so, yeah. yeah you start you start shaking when you start jenga because you don't <laughs> yeah. know what to do yeah yeah, it's just good to encourage people and be like, we've all been there. And like, I know oh, so people sure. make it look effortless, but like, there was thousands and thousands of repetitions that got us there. So. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, today's day is like, on that time, when I started, I was like, I don't want to play in the hotel. And today is the opposite. It's like, when oh, yeah. can I play in the hotel? <laughs> totally. Yeah. And like, even that mental switch that occurs for people, like, I think that's so common for anyone that at oh, first... Yeah terrified to go in but then like it just sneaks into your brain are you thinking about capoeira when you're not there training and like your body's starting to understand moves and exactly yeah yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> it's, it's a point where you you don't think anymore you just move yeah absolutely it just yeah. takes over <laughs> how, how do you feel in the, your like very first presentation 
like in presentation in front of people. Like the very first time that I performed? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh gosh, I can't remember like my first public demo. Um, I do remember seeing video of my very first batizado and that was like the most painful thing to watch. Um, some people play really, really fast when they're nervous and mine yeah. looked like I didn't know what I was doing and I think I was just scared and waiting to be knocked out. <laughs> but I was like barely holding a jinga and just getting like pushed around. Yeah. Yeah, just jinga, 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 woman. Yeah. That's, that's exactly me, how I was. Yeah, but it just takes years to like loosen up and yeah. get used to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, that's so cool. Everybody's super excited to get caught. Yeah, meeting people. Or they're nervous, or they're proving stuff. <laughs> yeah. Put it out of your head. But yeah, like the joy is in the game and... Yeah, like when you can just talk to someone else to be like, let's just have a good game, let's have a conversation. Like it, I don't know. I think that's where the that's where the magic is. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I think. What is your favorite thing on in in the capoeira community or or about capoeira? My favorite thing. Yeah. Oh, I I don't think there could be one thing. Um, yeah, like it's it's always different things at different parts. Like you know, like I think the movement of it is what gets you started. Um, yeah. but even within that, like there's days that like, you just want to train kicks and you're just like, you're loving your speed. Or then there's days that you're learning new things with your back and your shoulders. And you can tell that you've got new acrobatics on the go. Um, I've had some injuries this year. And so oh. it's been the year like, okay, it's time to just start working on my music and learning new songs. Yeah. And like that just opens this brand new door when all of a sudden you've got this like Oh yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. The that, that's the the really cool thing about capoeira. Like, if if some if, if for some reason you can't train, you can do music, you know, yeah. or like sing. If you if you throw hurts, you can sing, and you hurt, you can go do beating ball. You know what I mean? It's something yeah. something that you can do. Well, and I think your your growth with singing it's so similar to playing in the hada. Like when you're oh, yeah. you, you dread being in the hada. And then you're like, I could never sing in front of 20 people. But then yes. like, I think like for me, I actually finally just got impatient with myself with like being so afraid of it. And I was like, okay, I got to take charge of this. Um, <laughs> but nice. then it became like it or this excitement to be like, oh, I learned a new song. I want to sing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. No, same same thing. Same spot. The the first time I was started singing, I was, I was practicing with my friends and just two of my friends. Yeah. The, I was on three, the three beating balls, and we were probably like three feet, five feet away from each other, and they couldn't hear me. I, because I was like singing inside, I was like super shy to sing. And yeah. even we just two friends. Yeah. 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 We, uh, we did do an event for the university earlier this year, and um, one of my instructors said that he was just like, man, if someone would have told me like five years ago that Baquette could sing and fill a room, I'd never believe it. And I was like, that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll belt it. I don't mind. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I like to have my students. I always like at least like grab one, and I sing, and I have just one doing the chorus, and then yeah. I sing, and I have one on just the chorus. I at least like start like loosening up a little bit, that shiny and all, yeah. because I I be there. Yeah. No, we do that. Well, so we have it kind of similar when we do music class, but. Uh... We'll do like the call and response and kind of go all the way around the circle of students there so everyone does it once and it's just like it's encouraging the same way it is with like early movement and stuff like that it's just like trust me like even senior students some of us are stumbling over the language or like putting all of our syllables together like it's okay we're all learning this together <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah yeah i feel i feel like we we become as a human being we become so perfectionist that we want to be so nice so perfect and yeah. we just sometimes we don't like take it out on like like show it. Oh, for sure. Well, okay. And actually, that's something 
I hadn't thought to bring that up, but I feel like that's been a common theme with like other females in Capoeira. It's probably, I think, anyone across the board, but you're always your own worst critic or you're always so hard on yourself. So, like, yes, yes. I have to look perfect or I have to look confident doing this. And yeah, so many of us, I think, are just like beating ourselves up over how everything looks or sounds. And I think, yeah, if you can just let that go and just put yourself out there, like you're going to grow and you're going to find so much confidence. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I believe, I, I'm a big believer that the growth are on the mistakes, you know, like that's, that's when you like grow, cause making mistakes, because you know how you learn, you know. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and, and obviously the Capoeira community help you, like pump you up and be like, hey, you know, like play more, sing more, play yeah. more instruments, or let's practice more and all stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I think uh, that is just like, embrace that you're gonna suck at everything when you're new (laughs) you just gotta be bad at this for a little while like it'll you'll get better (laughs) oh yeah for sure for sure don't be don't be shy just try and just keep going 100% (laughs) yeah yeah it's actually it's not going to get better if if it's not practice too because yeah Yeah, no I think you just you have to fall in love with it and uh it's not hard to do that I think it sneaks into all of us but for sure yeah so i've learned too a lot with like training or trying new moves um just like recording it on your phone and stuff you can kind of like you like watch it back and just like especially doing it in slow motion and you just learn like little things that like yeah oh yeah for sure like an inch at a time and just things like that or how you can kind of grow that's a that's a good tip yeah just for for people listening out there now you know (laughs) you can Grab a phone, put it up there, and start like you know, just a jinga at least to get started with it. Totally, you don't even have to put it on the internet. You can just keep it yeah. yourself. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> and start like reviewing, and uh, you can like compliment yourself. Yeah, no, for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, what what would be you your advice uh, to 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 wrap it up? You you advice for the 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 or they already say the capoeira uh, female your advice for the female community um i think that's on multiple levels like put yourself out there be willing to be vulnerable this is a you know it's historically a male dominated sport yeah all of us are trying to grow within it and i think for for the senior females like god just like be aware that you're you're encouraging so many of us like we really look up to you and then for the new ones coming in, just try and like you oh, are sure. and you can do any of this stuff and just be patient with yourself, be grateful for yourself. But keep going. Like oh yeah. We all need you. The world needs you. The sport needs you. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, for sure. We we need that female support in the in our, yeah. our Capoeira community. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure I'll think of something like really eloquent to say as soon as we're off this podcast. So I'm like, oh <laughs> <laughs> in uh what what would be your personal advice for the Capoeira community in general, like everyone in the Capoeira community? Just to support each other and grow. And uh, it's a new generation coming in now. Like there's, I think there's so much when you come in of like not knowing, um, like not knowing like little intricacies and delicacies of like which groups don't talk to which groups or who's not friends with who, and, like, I think a lot of this comes from, you know, like, disagreements between mestres that are, like, so far beyond our generation of Capoeira, and, um, yeah, I think just, like, collaborate, work together. We all have different styles, every school's got its own discipline, but you can learn so much from each other, and, um, Oh, for sure. I think one of my favorite things I ever hear in workshops, and multiple teachers have said it now, but they're, like, think about Capoeira like a buffet. Like, you like this move? Take it. Use it. Learn it. You don't like this move? Oh, I like that one back and like it's so true like your you know your game your jenga it's going to be like your handwriting it's not going to look like anyone else's like you've all got your own distinct like corporate right. style so yeah yeah a hundred percent because everybody put their own personality into even into a jenga if you say jenga everybody has got a different personality yeah hundred percent that's awesome that's awesome you know what are your social medias again uh, it's uh, just at designed by ST Light, so designed by Street Light. Nice. <laughs> and uh, have you ever tried to, or, or I'm pretty sure you, you have done it, the like animation for Capoeira? I 
haven't tried animating anything like um, on computer. I suspect if I was to work with Shiganshi on that, like I could draw a bunch of stuff and we could put it together. Yeah. Which would be interesting, but. <laughs> that would be really cool. Yeah, I've been talking with one of the guys, Kate Adam from California, because he was like, we should do a calendar next year. So he's going to help me like reach out to people. And I did kind of like a generic one last year where it was a bunch oh. of like paintings of Brazil with Caprices, but we're, we're actually going to pick like locations, like countries where there's like a kind of like a famous Caprice there and like feature them. And, oh, you know. that would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, Indianapolis got to be there too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get and going. You just pay me like this, because you see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, take a cup later, move, and you're like, shamada. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes. So, well, thank you so much for, for sharing your, your cup of experience, your perspective on everything in the, in the, for the female community and the cup of in general community. Yeah, my pleasure. Yes, thank you so much. And I will we'll keep in touch. And uh, remember, play a, ho a lot in the hoda. Yeah, well, hopefully we get to meet one day in the lottery. Oh, okay. yes, for sure. Yes, that, that's, that, that's on my plan. Yeah, excellent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Ashe. Bye, Ashe. All right, I just want to share something with you really quick. If you are listening to this and you teach or assist to a capoeira class, or even if you have an event coming up, I want to help you. I want to help our capoeira community because there's nothing, nothing, nothing more important to me than help our Capoeira community. Because classes are more fun when there's more people to share this, this ashe, this energy so awesome that Capoeira has. So I want to share your class or event in our podcast. So reach out to us with school name or any information on how people can find you and send it to our email, podcastcapuera at gmail.com. That's podcastcapuera at gmail.com. And I will share that information here in our podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you like this podcast. If you did, take a screenshot, send it to someone that knows about Capoeira or of course wants to learn. Share it everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, everywhere and help us grow this community with a subscribe. Thank you so much. Peace.